York is a beautiful city in Northern England and is consistently voted as one of the best places to live in the UK. Where ancient and modern meet, York is home to York Minster, one of the largest Gothic cathedrals in Europe. The city is encircled by the city walls and boasts historical links with Romans and Vikings. York also has the Shambles, which is famously known as the inspiration for Harry Potter's Diagon Alley, as well as a host of other fantastic attractions for tourists and amenities for locals. One such attraction is the River Ouse. Lined with restaurants, pubs, shops and housing, the river is a great feature that runs through the heart of the city. However, the river is not only a lovely feature to be enjoyed by pleasure cruisers, it's an unruly neighbour who can cause damage and devastation to those who live and work nearby. The River Ouse has a catchment of over 3,000 square kilometres. Rainwater and snowmelt from high areas like the Pennines and North York Moors flow through countless rivulets, streams and tributaries, including rivers like the Swale, Ewell, Nid and Foss. Indeed, York is sited at the confluence of the River Ouse and Foss, which creates its own difficulties and potential for further flooding. The streams which flow into York can rise and fall very quickly. This shows a 24-hour difference in river levels. With such rapidly changing river levels, York needs to be constantly ready to deal with potential flooding. Due to numerous flood events over many years, York has invested in a multi-strategy approach to flood defences. These defences start to the northwest of the city in an area known as Clifton Ings. Clifton Ings is a natural floodplain where water is deliberately diverted into the Ings to prevent it from entering the city. This area can hold 2.3 million cubic metres of water that would otherwise flow into the city. So here we are, we're at the north end of Clifton Ings and as you can see we're on one of the sluice gates here. This sluice gate is allowing all this water that's coming down from the flooded river ooze through and off into the distance onto Clifton Ings. And by doing that it's going to lower the level of the river within the York city centre. Flood banks and embankments have been constructed to increase the capacity of the stored water, meaning the river level in the city can be lowered by around 15 centimetres. Making our way to the south end of Clifton Ings, we can see that there is a great deal of water held behind the embankments and flood banks, whilst a great deal more is flowing through and into the city. We can see here the impact flood banks can have, with housing being protected from the flooded river. Moving further downstream, we're going to come into the city, where some different flood defences are in action. Looking out from Scarborough Bridge towards the city centre, we can see the River Ouse is very high, so the houses next to the river have floodgates fitted. When the river is flowing at its usual level, these gates can be left open, but as the river level rises, the gates shut tightly in place to prevent the river from flooding into the properties. More large flood barriers protect other properties and roads on the opposite side of the river, although car parks can be left to fend for themselves. So here we are in York, we're right next to a very large flood wall which is protecting some businesses and some residences from the flooding which is happening just over that wall at the moment. As you can see we've also got some extension up here which has been put in place very recently just in case there's some more floods and larger floods in the future. We're also right next to this very large door which is swung shut and locked in place to keep that water out during times of flood. More large barriers at the top of North Street prevent the river from entering the street, meaning that businesses and properties are saved.
unfortunately, not everywhere can be saved from the rising water levels. This is the famous King's Stathe, where we find the King's Arms pub. We can clearly see just how much of an impact the use has, with flood water inundating the pub. So here we are, we're on King Street in the centre of York and as you can see behind me, the River Ouse has well and truly burst its banks. A few things to notice, that traffic sign behind me, it gives you an idea about how high the rivers come up. You can see the King's Arms over here with the water rising right up inside the pub itself and behind me over here you can see those pumps furiously pumping out the water as quickly as they can. Further downstream, there are large pumps moving water from flooded buildings and streets back into the river and away. Just a bit further downstream from the city centre is one of York's more innovative flood protection methods, the Foss Barrier. So here we are, we're at the confluence of the River Ouse, which is over here behind me, and the River Foss, which is a tributary of the River Ouse. And what you should be able to see behind me here is the Foss Barrier. And you should also be able to see that the Foss Barrier is closed. What that does, it stops water from the River Ouse over here coming in and backing up into the River Foss. Now the River Foss flows all the way through the centre of York and if this Foss Barrier wasn't here it means that all that flooding water from the River Ouse would go right into the centre of town and flood into residences and shops. At the moment that barrier is down but what's happening is there's some major pumps pumping water out of the Foss and keeping the Foss flowing and the Foss levels down. As you can see, the Foss water levels have been kept low, meaning that properties and businesses are kept dry. The beautiful city of York will undoubtedly have to continue to battle river floods with a multi-strategy approach as long as the River Ouse flows through the heart of the city.